Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Micah. Today we are going to be talking about my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick collection. I have eight lipsticks in total, seven from her Matte Revolution and one from her K-I-S-S-I-N-G line. These I've gathered over the years because these are quite luxury and a little bit more expensive. They're not too, too expensive for a luxury lipstick. I believe that things like YSL, Chanel, Dior, they definitely retail at a little bit of a higher price point even than these do. I believe these retail all for around the 32 euro mark, but I believe her different lipstick ranges have different price points. So make sure that you check that out before you decide to buy these. I really, really enjoy the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipsticks. That's one of my favorite formulas. And that's why I wanted to talk about it and do a full video dedicated to all eight shades that I have here. As I just mentioned, the Matte Revolution lipstick line is my favorite from Charlotte Tilbury. I do have to say though that I haven't tried any of the hot lips or any of the other lipstick lines. I've never tried her liquid lipsticks, but I remember when I went into store to try Charlotte Tilbury for the first time, I knew I wanted to try the lipsticks and I instantly fell in love. There's just something about the formula the way these feel on the lips, the way the bullet is shaped, that they just go on so effortlessly and they stay put all day. They are matte, but still comfortable. It just does everything that I want in a lipstick, so I thought we could rave about these for a minute. However, I said I have eight and I only have seven of these Met Revolution ones, so that means I have one from a different line and that's the K-I-S-S-I-N-G line. I have Stoned Rose, First of all, these all come in the same packaging. So this rose gold standard like Charlotte Tilbury packaging, which I love as well. Stoned Rose, um, I bought because I wanted to try one of her other formulas. And this bullet is shaped like any regular bullet. This is not special yet. Um, and this I haven't used a lot because I'm just not a huge fan of this formula. It is a very pretty shade. I have to say. It's like a blushy nude kind of shade. That's how I would describe it. It does have quite a bit of peach, but this is just a lipstick that isn't quite right for me. I do by now like cream lipsticks a lot more than I did when I first bought this, so I may have to just give this another whirl and give it another chance because I am sort of more into creamy formulas nowadays than I was when I purchased this. But I remember this not wearing very well. It wore off quite patchy and it also accentuated quite a lot of dryness on my lips. I exfoliated today, so hopefully we won't be seeing any of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of what we have going on right now. So let me put on this lipstick and see what it looks like on. So that is what Stoned Rose looks like on me. I have fairly pigmented lips naturally. They pull a little bit pinky purple very often. So I feel that that's why not all shades look on me the way you might expect. I definitely struggled with that at first when I started buying lipsticks. But I feel this goes very on true to color. Um, I feel that the lipstick I see in the bullet is also what I get on my lips. And I would describe this shade as like a pink toned terracotta. So in that sense, the name stoned rose of this is so, so well, well picked because it's got pink or like a rosiness to it, but it also has this orangey, like terracotta-y kind of thing from it that you get from like earthy tones. So I think that works really well in this lipstick. I'm not so sure about this lipstick on my complexion though. Um, I bought it because I liked it. It was just perhaps a little bit off. It's one of those purchases that I made that looked really pretty in the store. I don't think I actually tried it on my lips before I bought it, but now I have it. It is nice. I just think that uh, the eye look I'm wearing today is quite cool toned, so I think this would work better if more of my makeup was a bit more warm toned and if I was a little bit more tan. Right now, we're in December, it's the middle of winter, I go super duper pale. I may have to go back to this in like the spring summer time because I think with a different makeup look and with a little bit more color to my face, I can still make this work. Next up is one of the OGs, one that everybody loves, 
Matte Revolution lipstick in Pillow Talk. Mine doesn't look that well used because it's not my favorite nude ever. Um, it's pretty. I actually have used up a lipstick that looks very much like this, but it, it was by Catrice and it was a creamy formula. It was the Power Plumping Gel Lipstick in 030 Speak Up by Catrice, which is a German uh, drugstore brand. It retails for four euros over here. I'm not sure if that lipstick is available everywhere, um, but the shade of that is very similar to this. So if you're not into mattes, you don't want to spend this much money on a lipstick. Uh, I do have a dupe for you as well. So that Catrice lipstick, uh, I'll make sure to uh, uh, link you to that in the description box in case you would like to find out so that you know what the name is if you want to look it up. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely, lovely shade, I have to say. It's just, it's not my perfect ever nude, you could say. So that's why I do like it because it does have that pinkiness to it. It has that mauve pinky sort of vibe to it and I'm not sure if I still own it. I may have decluttered it but I did also purchase the Pillow Talk lip liner together with this lipstick because Charlotte Tilbury as a brand always has these like um how should I say it like systems behind their products like a way in which she recommends the product should be used and with this lipstick and actually all of her lipsticks come with matching shades in her lip liner line so that you can do what Charlotte likes to do which is to put on a lipstick and then go in with a lip liner to perfect the lip line. I feel, so I bought that at the time thinking oh I need this full set to make the lipstick look great, um, but what I have found out is that because of the shape of this bullet, so let's discuss that now, this is, is it a little bit wonky from its use, um, so maybe I should show you this in another lipstick in a minute, I'm not sure if you can see that but it has this now you can see better. Um, it's very square and I thought, is that going to work? But I find that this lipstick shape is perfect with getting into the cupid's bow and really making sure you can perfect your lip line without a lip liner. So for me, the lip liner is a little superfluous, <laughs> I have to say, because I find these so easy to use. Because of that like flat edge at the top, I can really sort of like cut across to draw in my lip line and I just find these super easy to use. So yeah, this is what Pillow Talk looks like swatched on my hand. Again, I'm super pale. This is on my skin. This will look different on my lips, I'm sure. But can you see that it's got quite a lot of pink to it? It's like a pinky nude. That's how I would describe it. I'm again reminded why I love these lipsticks so much, like the formula of this. It feels so comfortable on the lips, like I don't even understand why she has a cream formula line. Like it's absolutely not necessary with something this balmy yet matte, which is what I prefer. Um, so this lipstick, as you can see, it doesn't look as pink on me. Um, I think it looks a little bit more peachy and that probably has to do with my natural lip color, sort of color correcting the lipstick in a bit, and that's why I say this isn't my perfect nude. I like something that's a little bit more, uh, let's say, well not plummy, but that has a little bit more of that pinky purpleness coming through. Like this pulls very neutral on me, nothing too offensive, but that's why this does have a bit more warmth to it and that's why it's not perfect for me personally. The third lipstick I have for you is one that I bought quite recently, so I haven't gotten a lot of use out of this, but I wanted to try this after finding out that Pillow Talk just wasn't 100% perfect. And it's Very Victoria. And Very Victoria is more brown toned. Let me put these side by side for you so you can see. So if you put these side by side, then you can see that Very Victoria is a bit deeper. Um, it still has a bit of that plummy, mauve -y kind of undertone if you look at the bullet. Um, but it does have more brown to it too, I feel. So in terms of nudes, what I usually like is a nude that is a little bit darker because of my naturally pigmented lips. Very often these very light nudie shades just kind of look different on me than what you would expect from what it looks like in the bullet. That's just the way it is. I can't help that. That's just the way my physique works. So let me show you Very Victoria. 
and that's it swatched right there. I actually bought this as part of one of those Sephora lip kits. That's how I came by this lipstick. I actually bought the lip kit because buying the lip kit was only a little bit more expensive than buying this full size and then I would get like another full size lip product plus like six minis that I could try. So that was great. So that's why I bought this one. Uh, and as you can see, it's definitely different from Pillow Talk. So Pillow Talk has a little bit more pink in the swatch, I would say. Um, but uh, Very Victoria is... It's not too brown. It's not like Max Swirl Brown or anything like that. But it just has a really nice blend. It even, it even looks like it's got a bit of red in there. Like, I just really like this. So in terms of nudes, this is my favorite one from Charlotte Tilbury. And there we have Very Victoria. Do you just see what I mean? This is so much more flattering on me than Pillow Talk was just now. It doesn't pull too, too warm. It does have brown, but it just really works with my complexion without it looking flat or dead or whatever most nudes seem to do on me. Like I can look very, very sickly in nudes and this one just perks up my face. It does enough, but without overdoing it, this is the nude of my dreams from the Charlotte Tilbury line. Um, but I have one more like nudie shade for you. And this was actually the first one I purchased. And it's a peach, which if you know anything about me, I don't really like peaches on myself. But for some reason, whenever I go up to a counter, makeup artists always recommend this shade to me. And the shade I'm talking about with this, that's what this what happened to this one too. This is Sexy Sienna from Charlotte Tilbury. And this was the, one of the first Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that I ever bought. Um, it's sort of like a, yeah, it is pretty. Uh, it has this like corally peachy kind of vibe to it. I mean, it's very pretty. It's got a little bit of brightness to it. And I believe this shade is called Sexy Sienna after Sienna Miller, um, the actress, uh, I think she was, I just recently saw her in a TV series called The Loudest Voice with Russell Crowe about the, uh, found, like the foundation of Fox News and how that all got started. And then she plays his wife and she's a phenomenal actress. And she is this like, also like blonde haired, sort of like, I think she's deeper than my complexion for sure. Um, but I think she, we do have similar features. So that's why I do understand why someone would recommend a shade like this for me. So let me see what this looks like on, because I, to be quite honest, because of this being quite orange, I haven't worn it in a while. So that would be Sexy Sienna. And again, I do understand why they picked this for me, but what you can't really see in the viewfinder, but what I can see in real life is that my natural lip color kind of comes through this lipstick because it has so much brightness. It has quite a white base to it, I find, that it just kind of doesn't really work with the purpliness that my lips usually have. But shade-wise, I mean, can you just see? It just lifts up my face. It brightens it up. It's a perk up, yet it's not a bright, like it's still neutral. And I do really like that about this lipstick in particular. Now we get into the slightly deeper shades that I have. And this next one isn't exactly a deep shade because it can still work on me as a neutral. And that would be Bond Girl. And I believe this shade is either no longer around or it has been renamed because quite a few of Charlotte Tilbury's lipsticks have been renamed in the past few years. Bond Girl is another like brown tone nude, but it's not as light. Like I think Very Victoria is definitely lighter than this is. Like this is a bit more intense and it has, how should I say it? A little bit of like a hint of something berry slash reddish running through it. It's a very interesting shade and this is the kind of shade that I like to wear when I want to, when it just needs to be a little bit edgy, but not quite. You know, it's just, it's still wearable but it's different, if you know. I'm not even sure if I'm making sense, but let me swatch it and show you. So I wanted to swatch it so you could see a little bit what it looks like compared to Very Victoria, but you see that this has a lot more red to it, yeah? So, but this works 
like a nude on me, like a really dark nude. It kind of gives me rhubarb from Bide Beauty vibes, which is one of my favorite all-time neutral lipsticks. That one is a little bit more pink tone than this. It's nef definitely not the same shade. Um, but this does remind me of that. It has that reddish undertone as well. This is perhaps pulling a bit more brown, a little bit more edgy. It's sort of like, well, she has a nude that's called like 90s nude. That is that brown tone nude. But if I had to pick a 90s like brown tone nude that works well on my complexion, I go for this. So this is what Bond Girl looks like on me. And do you just see that, again, I love nudes that have a little bit of a reddish undertone. Again, I'm not calling this a nude per se. This will not be a nude on everyone. But even with my fair complexion, this is a neutral. Like I can wear this with so many different looks. And that's again why I really, really like this one. And it is definitely one of my favorites from the entire line. It is a little bit more unique. You will not find a lot of brands doing shades like this, which is what I appreciate. And to stick to that sort of like berry-ish kind of shade, I wanted to first go in with a shade that's a bit deeper. I think this is the deepest one I have, and this is Love Liberty. And this is the berry in the line. Um, there is one that used to be called Glastonbury that's now called like the Festival something. Um, that's the deepest shade she does, but that's very, very purple and not really my, not really something I'm lusting after. Um, but Love Liberty is Bond Girl but darker, <laughs> pretty much, and with a bit more plum. Let me show you this. Oh yeah, it's like if you like the vibe of Max Rebel, but you would like it to be matte and less purple. And this, this is a really, really, really stunning very perfect berry such a great winter fall lipstick this one is i pull it out every season and very often i wear this around christmas time as well which is actually why i'm sitting down to film this video right now because if there's one brand that just speaks christmas and holiday season to me it's charlotte tilbury man it just is And that would be Love Liberty. Did I say that did I say anything too much about this lipstick? Like, isn't it this just the perfect berry you've ever seen? At least in my book it is. It's like a really, really gorgeous berry. And I think with this dark shade, I was also able to show you how you can really sort of use it. Like I always have trouble with this part of my top lip to where it like kind of like bunches up here and then there's like a gap in the middle. But because of that flat edge, you can really take it and smooth out that line, like without using a lip liner. Um, you still have to be careful, of course, but with darker shades like this, it's a must have to have a lipstick that can be that precise and not mess it up. So that's why, again, I appreciate this lipstick very, very much, like this range. Are you ready for favorites? Um, my ultimate favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipstick is none of the ones I've swatched for you so far. <laughs> it's the one I have in my hand right here. Uh, this is, again, together with Sexy Sienna, one of the first uh, Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks I ever bought. And I remember putting this on because I knew I wanted to try a cream, and I wanted to try, like, a cream, a creamy nude, and a matte red. That was, like, that's usually my go-to whenever I try new lipstick brands, is to see how they do, like, a cream formula, or at least a nude shade, and how they do a red. And Charlotte Tilbury's Red Carpet Red is quite possibly one of the most perfect red lipsticks on the market, period. I have a few other favorites. We all know my love for Max Russian Red. We all know my love for Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Ribbon. But this is also part of that top three, and I sort of go with three, between the three, which one is at the top very often. I remember when I bought this, or when I set out to buy Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, the sales assistant put this on my face, and she was like, I don't want to take it off you. Like this, this, th you need to wear this for the rest of your life. This is the best lipstick on you ever. So let me demonstrate that for you. There we have Red Carpet Red. Really, really good blue toned red. Let's put it on.
Charlotte Silbury's Red Carpet Red. I mean, everybody always, like, if you've never seen a video, a lipstick video from me, Hi, my name is Micah. If I put on a red lipstick, magic happens. Doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I look at this and I'm like, this just goes with my complexion. It's truly that very classic smack in the middle red that's gonna go with everything. This doesn't pull too pink. This doesn't pull too orange. This is the kind of red lipstick that's just going to see you through so many different things. You can wear this to work if you want to go for that power moment. You can wear this to a date night. You can wear this to a party. This is the red lipstick to all red lipsticks, especially within Charlotte Tilbury's line. And if you were to ask me also in terms of like what's on offer in the makeup world, I rate this very, very highly. And my last lipstick is what I hope to be another red. And I say hope to be, because this lipstick will be the first time putting it on my lips. Because I was looking at my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick collection, and then I was like, I've got seven, which is not a nice number to show in a video. Like, I like even numbers. And this particular shade had been on my wish list for a while. This is Lost Cherry. And Lost Cherry is described by the Charlotte Tilbury website as a fuchsia, a raspberry fuchsia. And I'm like, to me that looks like a pink tone red, but I'm not sure, not sure how this is gonna go down. I've never actually put this on my lips. So I don't know what it looks like on me, um, but I remember when I, whenever I swatch this on the back of my hand, so let me do that for you as well. Like, look at that. This is still pristine, like I've only swatched it so far. And on the back of my hand, doesn't it look quite reddish? This is not a fuchsia to me. Like a fuchsia has a lot more blue to it. Um, and this is definitely more like, almost like corally leaning. It's got red, it's got a bit of orange, it's got a bit of pink. It's really that sort of in between. It's almost like, oh, what does this shade remind me of so much? Yeah, to me, anyways, it, it reminds me of some sort of like rock candy kind of sort of like situation. But to me, the way I would categorize this is like a pink toned red, a raspberry red, but like a light one. Very often raspberry reds are really intense. So I can't wait to see what this looks like on my face. This doesn't look like a pink on me. <laughs> also in real life, like, it's like a soft red. It's like, if I wore a red lipstick all day and then it like blotted off, I would almost call this like a watermelon. That's what it reminds me of. Like the in, like that reddish shade you get in a watermelon. It's like I just ate a popsicle. Like, I love this kind of shade. This is perhaps more of like a spring summer kind of deal for me though because that's when I like to wear these shades. It's light, it's vibrant, it's got a little bit of pink, I have to agree, it definitely has pink, but it's not a fuchsia pink, my dears, over at Charlotte Tilbury. You really need to work on your shade description there. Um, but yeah, let me know in a comment down below if you have any recommendations for me what Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks I should try. Uh, for instance, I would very much like to try some of the hot lips, but I'm not really sure where to start because a lot of those shades just seem to be very standard. Like one of the things I really appreciate about these Matte Revolution lipsticks is all of these different undertones that just work really well on me. Like I've got a perfect nude, a perfect berry, an interesting like reddish deeper nude that still works really well, but it's still a bit more edgy than your standard fare. It's got the perfect red. It's got great summer shades. And then it's got some more like neutrally things that, you know, if the look is right, I can still make work for me if I want to. That sort of idea. Um, so yeah, I really love these. So let me know in a comment down below if there's a shade that you own that you think Micah, that's gonna be right for you, then let me know. And uh, I hope also for those of you perhaps considering buying a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, that this video was somewhat helpful. I will link to any dedicated reviews that I've done with these because I do, not for all of the shades, definitely not this one, but I know that I think for most of these shades, I have dedicated reviews up 
on my blog. So I'll make sure to link you to that and then uh, I would like to leave it here. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video today. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week normally, but since it's going to be Christmas season, and I know everybody's like stuck at home, I'm going to be uploading a little bit extra. I know that most people do vlogmas before Christmas, but I'm a busy teacher. I don't have time to film extra content all, until Christmas break, which is starting pretty much this next week. So I will be able to film some extra videos for you, which will start going live on Tuesday. So I hope you'd like to stay tuned for that. And I hope to see you in some of my other videos. Bye-bye.